How many of you uh, know that it rained last night? Raise a hand. I want to see. Oh, good. Was it a good rain for you? Raise your hand. Happened? That's good. All right. I thought, what a lightning show it was, too. That was kind of fun and exciting. That was 4th of July. I want to welcome to you to uh, Denison United Methodist Church, and I'm glad you're here worshiping with us. Um, I want to say hello to those people that are on Facebook or online. Shout out to Hartley, Iowa. Shout out to um, hmm, Anna Cortez, Washington. Hi. And I want to shout out to Erwin, uh, Iowa also. Erwin United Methodist Church specifically. Good to see you this morning. Thank you for joining us. And let's see here. I got to look at my list. Hmm. I got some visuals this morning I'll point out to you. See those? Okay. And you know what? We got, we got some good talent here today. We, we got some brothers here today, and they are singing. So I am glad they're here. That'll be fun. So we'll look forward to that duet. Um, let's see. Announcements. Kathy has one. This is going to be a good one. I'm loving this. On Wednesday, and it's from 4 until 6 o'clock. But on Tuesday at 1 o'clock, we're going to meet and pack the supplies into bags so that it won't be so crazy when they arrive. So anybody that could come on Tuesday at 1 o'clock, we're, it, it shouldn't take probably an hour even if that, but it will be helpful if we have more hands. And then on Wednesday from 4 till 6, you could come like at 3.30 or 3.45 in there just so you get here ahead of the crowd. Because if it's like last year and the years before, they'll be here early. Um, and also I think I mentioned if you have any garden produce, that is abundant and you'd like a place to go. I know Larry and I used to sneak around at night and drop zucchini off at people's houses because we couldn't get rid of it. So if you have anything like that, tomatoes or anything like that, we'll put them on carts in the hallway because last year they took everything that we had so it would go to a good place. And thank you so much. Last week after we talked about this, what did we take in? $190 more? Yeah, you, you really supported it, and we have been able to pay for it. You know, it's not coming out of any fund here at, at church. The, the Kiwanis were good to us, and we got a gift card and different things, but it just makes me feel so good that, that you support stuff the way that you do. So it will be a fun time on Wednesday. Come on and show up with us. There's one over there. I'm Pastor Kurt Koppel, if I didn't introduce myself to you folks. Good to see you. But I really am honored and proud to be your pastor. And when I hear things like Kathy just talked about, I'm very honored and proud. And I'd love to see more of that. That outreach is wonderful. Thank you. Just a reminder. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody know what this announcement is? <laughs> if you don't, you will. Uh, the rummage sale is coming. We start on the 20, let's see, the 24th, that's a Thursday, and we start in the afternoon by putting things out on the table. And uh, I have sign-up sheets that you can sign up within the next couple of weeks. It would be, would be very helpful. Uh, setting them out is probably the hardest part about this job. And if we have a lot of people come, it makes it a lot easier, just like Kathy says. It goes faster. So we would appreciate it if you would sign up. It's Thursday afternoon and Friday morning that we set up. The sale day is Saturday, and we have something new this year. We're also having a bake sale. So if you feel like you don't have enough stuff to bring to us, then bake something and bring that. And we would appreciate it a lot. So that is a new item this year, a bake sale and a rummage sale mm. together. Awesome. Now, on Sunday, 
that's the day that we have one last chance to buy, but we pack up and we take our leftover things down to the thrift shop on Monday morning. So people with trucks, uh, RVs, whatever, I said last year even wagons, whatever you've got, come on that Monday morning so we can get everything cleaned up and down to the thrift shop. So I can't think of anything else. Okay. I'll see you Wednesday. <laughs> Remember? Oh, yes. I do have another job. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we would appreciate all the help that we get. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nancy. Um, I just wanted to thank uh, Todd Lauterbog for um, his sermon just last week for you guys. It was random encounters. I was having a random encounter down in Dallas, and I appreciate him filling in uh, last week. I just wanted to thank him. So if you see him, tell him thank you too. Uh, let's see. Any other announcements? Let's look at our calendar. I've, I've got something, Pastor. Oh. You don't ever pay attention to me. I'm standing back here. You, you know how everybody, always, we always say everybody shows up early for whatever kind of an event we've got? Well, I think we have a new record. After Tom's funeral yesterday, there was somebody coming and complaining because everything was gone already. I was here for, the, for your uh, church-wide garage sale. <laughs> early. And then also, if you didn't look uh, at the fellowship hall, we've got to take tables and chairs down. We need to probably leave up 10 or so. We can set them against the walls on the outside. And, but all, and the chairs, we don't have enough room for back in the storage area. So we leave out 20, 25 chairs folded up, stacked against the walls. So if we could get some help with that after the service today, that would be great. Thank you, Larry. Appreciate that announcement. Uh, looking at this week at a glance, we have a board of trustees meeting at 6 p.m. and an ad council meeting at 7 p.m. Uh, on Wednesday, we have the Crawford County Ministerial um, meeting. I'm looking forward to that because I'm looking to get that reinvigorated a little bit. Um, we've been helping out a lot of people this last month since I've been here, and I've been observing it firsthand, and uh, it's humbling, to be honest with you. Uh, 5 p.m., Kathy's announcement about the... A school supply giveaway, um, 5.30, Wild West Potluck. That's in Irwin. I think uh, Larry and I are going to be attending that. Are you, Larry? I knew he was, but I thought I'd ask. <laughs> so we're looking forward to that. That's kind of a district meeting for all the churches. Um, and I think that's all the announcement. Uh, oh, did you see that big one in the right-hand side of that? It says, invite someone new to church. Join us each Sunday. Re read that, would you please? Think about that for a moment or two. All right. Any other announcements that we might have today? None? If I see none, let's be in an attitude of worship and let us uh, sing our first hymn and make a joyful noise to the Lord.
Please join me in the call to worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. God is good. All the time. God is good. Please join me in the opening prayer. O God, our guide and guardian, you have led us apart from the busy world into the quiet of your house. Grant us grace to worship you in spirit and in truth, to the comfort of our souls and the upbuilding of every good purpose and holy desire. Enable us to do more perfectly the work to which you have called us that we may not fear the coming of night when we shall resign into your hands the tasks which you have committed to us. So may we worship you, not without lips at this hour, but in word and deed all the days of our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. You may be seated. We come to that time in our worship service to share our joys and our concerns. And we're kind of a good crowd today, so I'm hoping we have some joys. We talked about the rain, thank goodness. That was wonderful. Other joys you may have. Okay, let's go to the concerns. Oh, there's a joy. Yes! (laughs) Stand up, please. Uh, we had a little bit of a surprise this last week. We became great great grandparents. Oh. We had a little baby boy. Congratulations. Born. That is wonderful. Congratulations. I hear you. <laughs> well, I have a joy to have my daughter and granddaughter, Val and Heidi Reimers, here to be with me today. That is a joy. Thank you for being here. Patty, you have any concerns? <laughs> Anyone else have any concerns? If not, let's just take some moments here and kind of center ourselves and close our eyes maybe and just uh, think about uh, this time that we're here together worshiping. And let's just kind of relax and forget about those things that have kind of been on our minds this week and maybe yesterday or maybe the day before, and just let them go and be with the presence of God today. Here we are worshiping him, praising him, so just be with him, and then I will do a prayer, and then we'll do the Lord's Prayer together. So let's just take a moment of silence here.
Gracious God, we are here today to praise your name. We thank you for your many blessings that you have bestowed upon us this week. Lord, just help us to respond and learn from the way you treated us. Help us to make all feel welcome. We praise the Lord today for having visitors and guests here today, being, a, being able to do outreach. We are grateful, Lord, that we can serve you. Father God, we thank you for all that's been happening in our church this last week. I want to lift up Kirk Rosenbaum, and we just thank him for his graciousness and his generosity and helping us with the emergency food pantry. We want to lift up those people that are hurting and need help and are grieving and are missing their loved ones. We just want you to put your tender, loving arms around them. We lift up the Gustafson family to you, Lord, again today. We lift up Viola Shrimpton. We ask you to be with those folks specifically. And all those people that we haven't lifted up to you today, Lord, you know, we just ask you to to bless them and help them in their healing, be with them in their grieving, take care of them, Lord. Help us to renew our spirit. And let us respond with the invitation to others to come and see. Come and see what we're worshiping. We're grateful for Peter and Parker this morning. Praise God through song and music. We're grateful for Patty. We thank everyone that's helping in our church service. And we are most grateful for you teaching us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. His cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace. When fears are stilled and striving cease, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. Darkness seems to hide his face. I rest on his unchanging grace. In every eye and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. My anchor holds within. Say your 
Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise God the source of all our gifts. Praise Jesus Christ whose power uplifts. Praise the Spirit, Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. If you would join with me in the operatory prayer found in your bulletin or on the screen. God of abundance, we bring these gifts to you, acknowledging you as the source of all blessings in our lives. Help us to live wisely and to give generously from deep gratitude for your love. We ask this in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. Chapter 3, verses 19 through 22. I reprove and discipline those whom I love. Be earnest, therefore, and repent. Listen, I am standing at the door knocking. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come into you and eat with you and you with me. To the one who conquers, I will give a place with me on my throne, just as I myself conquered and sat down with my father on his throne. Let anyone who has an ear listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God is right. Thank you, Peter and Parker. I appreciate that so much, very much. I don't know why we didn't applaud for a little longer, but thank you, though. I, do you know these guys got home like at 1.45 last night, and here they are singing for us? So I appreciate that very much. Anyway, I'm glad to be worshiping with you this morning. Uh, blessings to each and every one of you. Uh, thank you, and thanks be to God. The rule of the Benedict is a document that has ordered the life of the Benedictine monks for 1,500 years. And this is a remarkable document written by St. Benedict of Nursia. It instructs the monks how they are to live their daily lives together in community. And one of the things that the Benedict describes is a particular role, the porter of the monastery. And quite simply, the porter is the one who opens the door to the monastery when someone knocks. Not much of a role, you'd say. Ah, but there is so much to it. So much entailed. And so much communicated in how one opens a door. 
author Joan Chitzer goes on to say, as far as she's concerned, the way we answer doors is the way we deal with the world. In the rule of the Benedict, the porter is given very specific instructions. He is to sleep near the entrance to the monastery so he can hear and respond in a timely way when someone knocks. Then, as soon as someone knocks, and most likely it's a poor person because uh, they often sought refuge in monasteries, but the porter is to reply, thanks be to God or your blessings please. That's before he even knows who is on the other side of the door. Before the porter knows who that person is or why he or she is there. He is to praise God for that person's presence and to ask for the person's blessings. Now isn't that remarkable? Benedict goes on to say that the porter should be prepared to respond whenever there is a knock on the door. It could be in the middle of the night or when the porter has just sat down to rest or eat. The porter is to be welcoming at all times and not just when it's convenient. Then the porter is to offer a welcome in Benedict's words with all the gentleness that comes from a reverence of God and with the warmth of love. And then the porter is to make sure that the other monks know of the presence of the visitor in their midst so that they can all join in extending a welcome. Can you begin to see why I say there is a lot to this role? of being a porter? You know, there are people in our congregation who play that role. They may not have the title of porter, but they play that role. They are quick to extend the welcome, and they know how to communicate, and that they know how to communicate with the newcomer's presence as a gift. As surely as if they were to exclaim, Thanks be to God. What an important role. Some days I think it probably is one of the most important roles of all. You know, some communities, perhaps by taking the lead of their unofficial or official porters, they kind of radiate a kind of welcome that receives visitors as gifts. No matter the circumstances, particularly when you are in need Perhaps nothing probably is more life-giving than that kind of welcome. I remember once when I was traveling to Lincoln, Nebraska, from my hometown, when my car broke down, and it was a time before cell phones. Some of you will remember that. There was such a time, I hope. So I needed to find a phone. I went to the nearest house and knocked on the door. I could hear a lot of conversation and laughter coming from the house. And the man who opened the door, who had never seen me before, did not step outside to speak with this stranger, me, did not stand in the doorway while I stood outside. Instead, the first words to me were, please come in. He didn't know me. He didn't know why I was there. But he immediately said, please come in. Remember being, I remember being quite struck by that. Really taken back, really. When I got off the phone that I used, I thanked him. And he asked how long before the road service truck would be there. And I told him, uh, they said about a half an hour. Well, then you may as well join the party. When I explained that I had two friends back in the car, he said, well, bring them in. So my friends and I joined the party. 
And when the road service arrived and the car was revived, and I think it was some kind of a belt, I don't remember what happened, I went back to the house to thank our host, and he said, why don't you stay for dinner, please? It was like we were expected all along. And by the way, <laughs> we learned that this was a gathering of a Bible study group from the local United Methodist Church. That was over 30 years ago. But you don't forget a welcome like that. You know, some households are like that. The home in which I grew up was a welcoming one. But my parents, they can always like to be prepared for visitors. In high school, wow, we're talking high school here. We always seemed to gravitate toward Jim James's house. That was the gathering place. If you didn't know where my friends and I were, it would be a safe bet that we would be at Jim James's house. It was like they were always expecting you to knock on that door when we didn't <laughs> even bother to knock sometimes. <clears throat> They made it seem like there was no such thing as an inconvenient time and that your presence was not a burden, but more like a gift. So I think of the porter in the monastery and the people who play that role in this congregation. And I think of the host who welcomed three young strangers like treasured guests at his party and I think of Jim James's parents, and I wonder why more of us are not like that. I wonder what, what prevents us from responding to a knock on the door by saying, thanks be to God. Well, state something obvious. Most of us don't like interruptions. We would rather live on our days by our own plans. And I try to imagine someone asking me, could I interest you in an interruption today? <laughs> I might respond, no, no thank you. I say that by way of confession, of course, because I recognize that interruptions are one of God's preferred ways of getting our attention. We usually experience interruptions as our routine uh, breaking up when it may be that God is trying to break into our lives. Interruptions can be God's way of breaking into our moments, breaking in between our harried rushing from this to that, breaking in between our rigid expectations. Sometimes a knock on the door is that kind of interruption. And so the porter says in response, thanks be to God. And we probably also have a hard time receiving a knock on the door with immediate thanksgiving because the one who arrives may not be the one expected. It may be a stranger whose ways are indeed strange to us that requires something like an adjustment. To truly receive a guest, to, to make room for the guest, requires that we adjust our routines and our expectations. I had a pastor friend. And he served in a church where there was a declining membership. So he prayed for new members to enliven their congregation. He asked the members of this congregation to also join him, join him in prayers. And just a few new families he was praying for. Is that too much to ask? Well, the new families he envisioned never came. But a home for adults with developmental disabilities did open nearby. And some of the residents began to come to worship. And then these folks brought some of their friends. And the congregation received these newcomers warmly. And even a bit little awkwardly at first, it required something of an adjustment. For one, they had to adjust their expectations of what a, a new member of the church would look like. You know, true hospitality does not ask a guest to change, 
but it does demonstrate a willingness to be changed by the guest. And by the way, when these newcomers joined the church, my friend said that it was the most joyous service they had shared in a very long time. He said, by receiving these new folks, we came more of a church than I thought we were capable of. In other words, they had been changed. The image of Jesus standing at the door and knocking, which comes from our reading from Revelations, has long been a very popular image with Christians. In the rendering, Jesus is knocking at the door of an unregenerated heart, seeking entrance. And it is another way of saying that Jesus longs to have an individual accept him as personal Lord and Savior. But, There is another way to understand this image standing at the door and knocking. It is related, but it is also different and very much along the lines of what we have been considering here. Why is the porter in a Benedictine monastery so quick to respond when someone knocks on the door? Why does he go to such extraordinary lengths to welcome the stranger? It is not just out of some general sense that it is the right thing to do. No, the porter immediately gets up to respond when someone knocks on the door of the monastery because it might be Jesus. It might be Jesus knocking on the door, not Jesus as we have ever encountered him before, but Jesus just the same. As Mother Teresa of Calcutta used to put it, Jesus often comes to us in his distressing disguise as one of the poor. After all, didn't Jesus say, as you did to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you did it to me. So, when the porter, or someone of the porter's spirit, Here's a knock on the door. He, he doesn't tarry to ask, who's that knocking at my door? No, instead, he gets up. He declares, thanks be to God, and asks your blessings, please, because it could be Jesus. And often and often it is. Come to that time in our worship service to join together in the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, and by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from the slavery to sin and death, and made us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. And on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread,
and he broke it. He gave thanks to you and broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup and gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and he said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice, in union with Christ offering for us, as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body and the blood of Christ redeemed. By his blood, by your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. I want to invite those that are going to help with communion. Emily, you can come up at this time. Let's see. Casey, you're coming up. Come on up. Don't be shy. We're going to have four people. We'll do two over here and two over here. You guys are getting experts at this. Now, Kathy, we know you're an expert. <laughs> a few instructions. I guess we'll come up the center aisle. We'll have two stations, and you parta- participate in the Lord's table, and then you'll kind of exit to the side, and th- there's baskets for your cups. And uh, I think it's important for you to know that uh, the United Methodists practice open communion. And we believe that all who love Jesus and intend to live a new life are more than welcome because this is the table of the Lord. So please come. First of all, be patient, and then I'll invite you up. I'm going to serve these folks first. of Christ given to you. The body of Christ given to you. The body of Christ given to you. Amen. The body of Christ given to you. Amen. That plate's heavy. The blood of Christ shed for you. 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 You guys stretch your hand to pick up another for me. Okay. Now would you please come to the Lord's table.
the body of Christ given to you. Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to dip it in here. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. You want to be me? I'll give you that. Oh, I was hungry. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Thank you. Thanks for reading today. It was good. Appreciate it. Should we stand for our closing wanted another verse. <laughs> Here's your blessing of the benediction. Let us respond. Thanks be to God. Your blessings, please. Go now in peace. Amen. <laughs>